Okay. All right, let's do something a little different. I'm going to talk about Swan Lake, right? And uh, I'm thinking of Julie Ken on this one, actually, because I think she has a premiere scheduled for Swan Lake, or they scheduled and then had to reschedule it. So I don't know if that's still going to go. But anyway, here's some, some details for you to think about for anyone setting Swan Lake or dancing it. So this is about you. So we have the, this, this white swan, black swan. Okay. So let me tell you what this is. First of all, a little bit of sort of perspective here. You have to understand that these ballets were this, this ballet, all of them, but this one was, they were created under extreme censorship, right? So these were created when the monarchies of the world were paying for ballet essentially, right? So you have to understand that, and in this case specifically, they were making a mockery of the monarchs, which is a good thing to do. Now, of course, these monarchies don't exist anymore, thankfully, for the most part. But you have to understand that that is baked into these ballets. Not all of them, but in this case especially, that the goofy prince, there's a reason that he's kind of a buffoon, uh, you know, and not to be taken that seriously, but the more interesting role is for the ballerina, obviously. So you have obviously black swan, white swan are the same person, the, the same being, let's say. The white swan is a man's idea of what a woman is or should be, right? Like kind of American 1950s housewife. You have this very limited role and this is who you are so that I don't feel com uncomfortable about myself as a man, right? That's kind of what the white swan is. Although I haven't seen that level of detail since probably Maximova, Plisetskaya, that generation. Now this is about being pretty and thin. It's, this is not a qualification to be a ballerina, but anyway, I digress. Um, so the white swan is that, for Americans, is that 1950s, ah shucks, kind of leave it to beaver housewife role. That, I guess, you know, men sort of put women in so that they didn't feel threatened by a woman's intelligence and all the other things. The black swan is there, that is, The woman trying to persuade the, the, the prince, in this case, to see her for who she really is. Now, normally you see the role played as kind of flirtatious and, you know, sexy flirtatious. Well, right, but that's just to get the man's attention so that maybe he'll look at her and understand her as a human being. And that, you know, women are just as extraordinary and complicated as anyone else, men. I mean, it's, it's, it's goofy that the, the, the housewife thing, that, that women were put in such a narrow... It's, look, the extent to which men misunderstand women fundamentally is, is fairly astonish, it's fairly astonishing to me. Not that I'm any kind of woman whisperer, I'm not, but I've just spent a lot of years in dance and around women, so, you, you know, it's just being interacting every single day with a large group of, you know, women of different ages, you, obviously you're going to have more insight than a guy who works with a bunch of guys. But that's why we have art, so we can share these ideas. So that's, that's the kind of the di dichotomy there. And you see at the end, she gets forced back into this, you're a swan, but really you're a 1950s housewife, here are your expectations. And so she wasn't able to in the story as it is, wasn't able to, she wasn't able to get the, the prince to see her for who she really is. And so, you know, she takes a dive. And then him being the dope that he is just takes a dive too. So, you know, it's a really, it could be a really interesting role, a really interesting role. Like there's so much, I just gave you the kind of five minute pitch of, as to what this ballet is really about. So it's mocking of the monarchy. It's, you know, painting this picture of the white swan as a man's idea of what a woman is or should be. And the black swan is a woman's struggle to get men to see her, her, her man, to see her who she, as she really is, the complex being that she really is. Without getting offended in the male ego going off the rails and then the rails after it, that kind of thing. And this is real life. This is real life. And if we would look at roles like that, 
these ballets would, I mean, even though I'm, I'm kind of, my whole thing is to create new ballets, but you know, some of these ballets are, are here to stay, they're gonna stay. But if you're gonna do them, let's inject some real feelings into it and, and, and real sort of nuance into them because that's what people can relate to because it's real life. Men really don't understand women at all. Women have had to understand men to survive. So I think on average women understand men much better than men choose to understand women really. It's not that we can't, but I always, I mean, uh, forgive the example, but so you know Elsa, our cat, it's, it's like, you know, dogs are kind of like the guys of the world, right? They're, they're, they're pretty, you can kind of see where they're at. Cats, you, you really have to earn their friendship and their trust. And, you know, still, you know, it, it's an ongoing thing. It's, it's a, like a relationship that takes, that has real nuance to it. And I think that might be, I mean, ladies might not like that analogy, but this is kind of for the guys as well. But anyway, all that is wrapped up in these characters, you know, the, the, the dopey prince and, and the white swan, black swan, who's the same being. So for Julie Kent, I don't know if you're, I know, I think she had a historian of some sort working with her. I'm not, probably you didn't get this from them. Uh, but this is something that's worth thinking about. And so this, so just to give you an idea, I know I'm always, we're, I'm always stuck talking about plie, but I'm going to more and more interject artistic ideas as well so that you, you have some other things to think about. Now, of course, you can't do any of this characterization if you're still struggling to be stable on the legs. This is another point that you need to understand. You know, we have the fundamentals. That gives you the technique. The technique, if you're stable, then we start layering, layering, layering different mm, It's a layering up process is what I'm saying, right? So you have your technique, good. Now the work really begins. Now we start to build in characterization, get into real deep ideas about art, how to present oneself in ballet, um, get into how to create steps that don't contradict the fundamentals that your technique is based on, but refer back to it so that we always have, so we have our language, we have our grammar, our vocabulary, boom, and then we can make poetry with it. Right? with the bodies. So it's, it's, it's a language of the body. And so we need to be really highly literate in that language. So anyway, that's Swan Lake for you. <laughs>